Uh, so my name's Rio. I'm a higher education um, champion for the NICO project. And today we will be joined by um, Nikki, who is a liaison manager at Balfour BT, and we'll hear all about the different apprenticeships that they have on offer um, and kind of the different uh, job roles that are included within that. So I hope you enjoy um, the event. If you do have any questions, as I say, please put them in the chat and I will pass over to Nikki. OK, thanks. Thanks, Rio. Hello, hello, everybody. Um, I hope you're all well and not not too cold today. Um, as Rio said, my name is Nikki. I'm a liaison manager for Balfour BT and I'm currently working on a project in Kings Lynn for our client Kings Lynn Drainage Board. The project is basically replacing the existing pumping station there. So that means that we are working to increase the flood protection for 1500 homes, 500 businesses and almost 7000 hectares of agricultural land. So obviously it's, it's a very important project for their local area. So I don't know whether anybody's heard of Balfour BT and if you've heard of us, if you know what we actually do, but we're a leading international infrastructure group. And that means that we're basically making sure that the world around us is working. And that means the roads that you travel on, the power that lights up your house, the water you drink and the buildings around you. We've got 26,000 people working for us at the moment and we've got our main um, areas of are uh, in the UK, the US and Hong Kong. So um, the set, what sectors do we work in? We work in transport, power and energy, water and social infrastructure. So some of the projects we're involved with, um, so we work in rail, um, we build bridges, we modernise stations, we maintain track across the UK, including London Underground, and we provide award-winning technolo technology solutions. I find that word really hard to say. Um, in power and energy, we renew gas networks, Works, we construct new wind farms, we build nuclear power stations and we light up whole cities. So I don't know if anybody's heard of, of um, Hinkley Point, but we are basically um, involved with Hinkley Point C. Um, in water, we hold back rivers, we construct super sewers. So if anybody's heard of Thames Tideway project in London, um, we work on, we're working on that at the moment. We provide better flood protection. So obviously the project that I'm involved with in Kings Lynn and we upgrade water systems which supply millions of homes. In social infrastructure, we build schools and universities, we construct hospitals, um, we basically built the London Aquatic, uh, Aquatic Centre, we um, up, were involved with the transformation of the Olympic Stadium, Any anything locally, so anybody in, in Norfolk, if they're aware of RAF Marham and the works that went on there to um, welcome the F-35 jet in, we, we basically um, constructed three buildings um, for that project. We enrich cities and we strengthen communities. So those are some of the projects that we're involved with. And basically all of those projects, we have to find answers to questions like, how do you give a road an IQ? By creating Southwest England's first smart motorway. So thanks to the ingenuity of our people, there's now a big chunk of the M5 and um, M4 that knows exactly how busy it is. So it's able to monitor the traffic flow and, and, and consequently to make the traffic smoother. That was 88.6 million pound scheme and in, involved the installation of 30 miles of fibre optic cables. Another question that we've had, had to find an answer to is how do you scan thousands of pairs of pants in three minutes? Answer by upgrading and installing a state of the art baggage screening and handling system to revamp Heathrow's Eastern baggage facility. And that's basically um, ensured that the um, travel for 27.9 million annual passengers and their pants has been much quicker and much easier. And that is a 170 million pound contract. Another question we've had to find the answer to is how do you make progress by going back in time? By digging into London's history to maintain and repair the tracks of the underground system that keeps millions moving every day. So basically we've been working under the streets of London to help people get where they're going. That's involved us uncovering abandoned stations, hidden treasures and, and also the odd defence asset. And that was a £220 million contract. Another question we've had to find the answer to is how do you turn boring into something cool by using three tunnel boring machines under the sea to help keep a nuclear power station at the right temperature. And this is what we do to enable cooling water to be channeled to and from a station that will help power the nation. And that supplied six million homes um, with power and has involved uh, nine kilometres of tunnels. 
How do you hold back the Thames for 100 years? By keeping the Thames barrier in peak condition, we've got a, a fantastic team who are keeping the Thames at bay, protecting £270 billion worth of property and 1.3 million people from flooding. That's a £308 million programme and has involved strengthening of 175 kilometres of the Thames estuary. How do you carry energy for 124 miles without leaving a footprint by using a specialist helicopter to fly environmentally friendly composite poles into place over some of the UK's most beautiful landscape and this is what we've done to connect a wind farm to the national grid in the highlands it really was blue sky thinking and it took green energy a long way and that was a 290 million pound contract finally how do you wash your hands with a cloud by harvesting and reusing rainwater. This is just one feature of the environmentally sound student accommodation that we helped create to create for the University of Bradford. And it was a fascinating project to be part of, um, one which is now considered a blueprint, uh, blueprint sorry, for eco-friendly living. Okay, so you can see some there some of the projects that we've been involved with, and basically we have to 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 find answers to to really complex problems. And infrastructure engineering is all about finding answers that will make the world work better. And this is the kind of impact that you could make when you join us. The good news is there are lots of different ways in, and one of the best ways into construction is through an apprenticeship. So at Balfour BT, we passionately believe that young people are our future. We're members of the 5% Club, and that's um, a club that was basically um, one of the founding members of that was our current CEO. Um, the 5% Club is a commitment to ensure that at least 5% of our workforce comprises of trainees, apprentices and graduates. So last year we saw a 30% rise in our emerging talent and that equates to 108 graduate placements, 160 apprenticeships and 29 trainee positions. So the total percentage of our workforce in what we call earn and learn positions has risen to over 6%. So we've, we're, we're way over our target for 5%. And this is a figure that we, we intend to, to improve upon because it's something we so passionately believe in. So here's where you can get started. Wherever you, you are in your journey, you can change your future with us depending on what your ambitions are and what your interests are. So you can go into areas like quantity surveying, procurement, civil, mechanical, and electrical engineering, digital delivery engineering, highways maintenance, finance, and many, many more. So one thing I did want to, to, to stress with um, construction, I think um, a common myth with the construction industry that it, construction is all about working on a building site. And whilst there are many um, really exciting um, and challenging roles on a, on a site, you don't have to work on a building site to work in construction. There are lots of other roles that support the, the, the um, project. So you can work in areas like HR, health and safety, marketing, lots and lots of different roles. So if we just quickly go through um, the apprenticeships that, that we have available, we do intermediate level two apprenticeships where you can go straight in. You don't need any qualifications for that. Um, and that usually takes two years. Advanced uh, level three apprenticeships. So you will need GCSEs for that. Um, you'll sometimes also need to do an aptitude test and that will take between two and four years. A higher or degree level apprenticeship, um, you'll need A levels for that. Um, and you, you, you'll you also, if, you, if you're doing that uh, higher apprenticeship, will encourage you, if you want to, to then um, to progress onto a degree apprenticeship, if, that, if that's something that, that would appeal. Um, and a degree graduate apprenticeship um, will take five years. You'll need three A-levels A for that, and you'll obviously come out of it with a degree uh, and a professional qualification. So these are the apprenticeships um, that we offer, um, civil and mechanical engineering, plant maintenance, highways maintenance, digital engineering, IT, data and software support, health, safety and environmental and sustainability, finance, business support and admin, quantity surveying, electrician, construction management, planning and procurement. So what are the opportunities in, in construction um, and in Apprenticeships. Well, we've got apprenticeships all over the UK in all kinds of professional roles. We offer paid internships. So if you decide to go to university and want an internship, we can offer you that as well as graduate positions after university. Whichever route you pick, you'll get to explore innovative technology, learn from the experts and really start building the professional future that you want. What are the benefits of a Balfour BT apprenticeship? 
as with all apprenticeships, you earn as you learn, and it's it's an absolutely amazing way to learn your trade. You're supported by mentors, people within the team who know the job inside out, who are there on hand to answer your questions. You develop great skills, people skills, knowledge of the industry. At Balfour BT, you'll earn a competitive salary, holiday, pension and salary growth. You'll also gain a great understand of the, understanding of the area you're working in, but also other areas of the business. We, we will actively um, encourage you and give the opportunity to work um, in other areas of the business and, and shadow other people in the business so that you get a really comprehensive idea of what a project is about and also what the industry is like. At Balfour BT will provide you with lots of opportunities to meet and network with the other apprentices in our business. Further down the line, when you've got experience on board, our apprentices are encouraged to do as much as they can to promote their roles within the business, as well as then going out and speaking in schools and colleges and becoming apprentice ambassadors. We also encourage you to take up the Braithley Challenge, which is the UK's best apprenticeship team. We'll provide you with great progression opportunities and you'll not only benefit from your occupational apprenticeship but also through the broader development training that includes um, health and safety, project management, communication, teamwork, leadership and networking. So ultimately a Balfour BT apprenticeship will equip you with the skills required to future your careers. We really do actively want you to submerge yourselves as much as possible within your role to gain the maximum benefit um, from your experience and to fully realise your potential. We realise how valuable apprentices are to our business and they're widely encouraged to build upon their roles. So as I mentioned earlier, if you want to build on your apprenticeship by moving from a level three to level four to degree, we'll positively encourage you in that direction. OK, so um, apprenticeships that we have um, currently live, we've got over 200 apprenticeships um, live on our system at the moment and we're building on those all of the time. Um, so at the moment we've got level two intermediate apprenticeship um, in highways, maintenance and welding. We've got level three advanced apprenticeships in digital project delivery, rail engineering, materi materials engineer, HS&E, finance, business administration and electrician. We've got level four higher apprenticeship in quantity surveying, construction, site engineer, electrical engineer, project management, data analyst, analyst, procurement and site supervisor, and level six degree apprenticeship for civil, enge civil engineering, quantity surveyor, envir environmental engineer. So I feel as if I've been talking at you for ages now, um, almost coming to the end, but if any of this appeals to you, um, I have to say, I know I sound massively biased, but construction is such an exciting industry to be part of. You've got the opportunity to work on so many diverse projects. I've been working in construction for two years, uh, sorry, four years. Um, I started off working on the RAF Marham project um, and that then have started, then I'm working on this project um, for flood defence. So as you can see, in, in four years, I've worked on two very, very different projects. And the most exciting thing about construction is that you can see that you're actually shaping the world around you. You're, you. You can look at the end of your project and think, you can see it. You can see it develop from, from the ground upwards. And at the end of it, you can say, I, I was part of that. I helped develop that. And it gives you a massive sense of achievement. So it, I can't advocate construction strongly enough. Um, it's an amazing, amazing industry to be part of. Um, and an apprenticeship is a really, really great way to get into the industry. So if you are interested, um, if you have a look at our website, uh, Balfour Beatty's careers forward slash early careers, that if there are any parents and teachers out there who'd like answers to questions, we also have a parents and teachers page, um, early careers forward slash parents and teachers. Um, but also, if there's any information you want on any of our schemes, and we've got a fabulous emerging talent team who would be really delighted to help you out. Um, there, if you get contact them on their email address, which is emerging.talent at balfourbt.com. OK, so that's it from me. Um, if you've got any questions, um, then please let me know and I'd, I'd love to help you. OK, that's great. Thank you so much, um, Nikki, for that. It was so interesting, especially to hear about the range of different um, roles that are available. And also, I have to say, um, really lovely to hear um, about, you know, 
the networking opportunities, the progression opportunities, um, and to hear from someone who's clearly very passionate about the sector that they work in. So um, that, was, that was really interesting. Thank you. Um, we don't currently have any questions. So what I'll do is I'll just give it a minute or two if anybody wants to add in anything, uh, any questions that they had. Um, I would like to just obviously say a massive thank you um, to Nikki for, for giving up your time and, and giving us such um, a good kind of overview of what sort of um, opportunities are on offer and uh, making us think a little bit about what those roles might involve and some of the projects that um, your apprentices are involved in. It, it does sound really exciting. So thank you so much for um, spending some time with us this afternoon. Sure. I would like to just um, remind anyone that's watching, we do have um, some other activities and events happening this week. So every morning this week, we have been releasing an apprenticeship video onto our YouTube channel. So if you take a look at our Take Your Place YouTube channel, you can find some videos such as weighing up an apprenticeship, looking at the pros and cons. Uh, we have live today a research checklist to help you with researching apprenticeships. We've also had some myth busting videos um, and tomorrow we'll uh, get a perspective to help with um, your parents or carers who might want to support you with um, finding an apprenticeship. So do take a look at our Take Your Place uh, YouTube um, channel. Then we also have our final National Apprenticeship Week live event tomorrow, and that will uh, be a mixture of things. As some of you may know, we've, we've got our Meet the Apprentices that will hopefully be rescheduled to tomorrow. And we'll also be hearing from Joe Taylor, who is the head of apprenticeships at the University of Suffolk. So hopefully you can join, join us there. And um, so we have had uh, a question and um, that's from a, a colleague of mine, Kit, who raises a really interesting question. So um, there's lots of exciting apprenticeships relating to the green and environmental sector. Does this mean that applicants will need to have GCSE or A levels in specific subjects like geography? Um, no, it, it, it doesn't. <laughs> it's it's um, if you if you are get, wanting to go into an area such you know as, such as um, you know engineering sort of side um, to it, then you would you would you would need um, STEM subjects. But no, you don't you don't necessarily have to have to do um, geography in terms of the, of the green side of things. We don't it, the GCSEs. Um, Whichever, I mean, obviously English and maths, we we like you to have, and if you don't have those, then we, you know, you'd need to um, you'd need to get those GCSEs, um, and or maybe that make them as part of your apprenticeship. But no, you don't. Sorry, a very long-winded answer to Kit's question is no, you don't. You don't have to specifically have geography, no. But obviously, an interest in geography is something that's going to want to put you in that area anyway. And, and would you say, um, just going off that kind of interest in geography, um, would you say that that's quite important when um, Balfour VT are looking at applications, that the people that are applying evidence in some way, their kind of passion for those different subjects, would you say that's quite um, important for um, potential apprentices to include? It's very important. And what, what, what is very important as well is that, you know, um, we are in work for a long time, so we need to make sure that what we the area that we go into is an area that's going to be of interest to us. Um, that is really, really important. And that's important, obviously, when you choose your GCSEs and your A-levels, you need to be thinking about things that interest you um, because, you know, we're always going to work harder at things that we enjoy doing. Um, but as I said, as you go into work, you need you want to go into an area that that is of interest to you. So um, you'll be much more passionate, obviously, about those those subjects, won't you, when you're when you're um, applying for an apprenticeship. Great, thank you. That was um, yeah, really interesting to hear. And, and thank you so much for joining us. I have a, had a look and um, I think that's all the questions. So your um, presentation must have been very thorough. So thank you very much. <laughs> there's, um, there's one I more video. Uh, there's one more question from Kit there. Um, what were you saying? Sorry, Kit. There's one more question. Ah. Perfect. Let's have a look at that. OK, so yeah, this is a really good one um, surrounding age, actually. What age would you be um, able to do an apprenticeship in infrastructure? Is there um, sort of any age limits around your apprenticeships? Um, no, no, there isn't an age limit. It, you know, it would be um, from six. Well, yeah, 16 upwards, obviously. Great. 
Perfect. So I guess um, that question was more um, just to check, obviously, around the specific surrounding infrastructure, but just to confirm for anyone watching as well. So, yes, yeah, so age 16 upwards for the um, level two and level three apprenticeships is uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Nikki, and then yes. if you want to do a degree apprenticeship, it's from um, 18 onwards. Yeah. Lovely. Great. I think that's all of our questions um, we have recorded this presentation and I'm sure um, if any of you do have any questions afterwards, um, you can um, let us know. Um, so I uh, will also be able to circulate our email details, but uh, you can contact myself or Kit um, if you have any questions about the presentation today or any apprenticeship related questions. Um, and we really hope that we get to see you in our live events tomorrow and um, also make sure you check out our YouTube videos, um, as I said. And again, just another massive thank you um, to Nikki for joining us today. No worries at all, pleasure. And if, if anyone does have any questions, please forward them on. I can also share the presentation um, as well, if that, would have, if that would be of use, so. That would be great. Thank you, Nikki. Brilliant. Great. Thank you all very much for watching. Thank you. Thank you, bye.